Do you have any announcements? Anything going on? For the shorts and the the reels and everything, that's going to be on a separate YouTube channel because I'm just going to be pumping out a lot of them. Cool. And I don't want to mess up all the things that I do have. So I don't know. I don't know if it's a good call or a bad call, but there'll be a lot of old reruns and a lot of shorts and reels on the QRE network that's called Clips. So oh, cool. Okay. I'm looking forward to that because... It's fun to see what you end up picking. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be a lot, a lot of laughs from the past kind of thing. A lot of old oldies but goodies, you know. Yeah, we looked a lot younger. <laughs> <laughs> Thinner. <laughs> it, it yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yeah, it's funny. It's been, gosh, what has it been? Four years now. Yeah. Yep. It's been yeah. It's a ride. Absolutely. Yeah. And a couple of trips to, um, we still got to do the Mount Shasta one, but he said he, yeah. He said he. Still need to figure out Mount Shasta. Um, yes, that'd be pretty cool. I'll look I think we were going to do one. that right when COVID hit. As I think when we were talking about trying to put that one together. So. Possibly. Yes. Yeah. Yes. We were throwing around the idea a lot. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How yeah. about you? Any announcements? Anything you got to say? Share with the community? What's going on? So, yeah. So I get to go to Truckee, California, right outside of Lake Tahoe. And we're going to do channeling and light language workshop there. Things are in the works to create more channeling and light language workshops. Mm -hmm. Just not sure where. If anyone that is a like a QHHD practitioner, I uh, I get to finally get to speak at one of the reunions. So I get to go to Ibiza, oh, nice. Ibiza or however you say that right. And um, I get to do, I have a 90 minute spot for uh, taking everyone on a journey to remembering their life in Atlantis. I think it's Atlantis. And uh, that spontaneously happened in Hawaii. And so now we're going to see what happens when we set the intention for that. And so that's going to be fun. That's in October. In November, I get to be on a panel at the Disclosure Fest in Las Vegas. So that'll be fun. So some events coming up, but also wanting to create some classes. And I'm working with Judy Koku to do an online class, uh, just like a little series of workshops with her. So that's something that we haven't been able to connect to do yet because we just, like yesterday, talked about it so <laughs> so now we got to connect and actually create Sounds it like you got a lot of things going on <laughs> there's a lot of potential things going on so you know if you guys are interested in any of these things i would love it ideally at some point i would get to travel to australia and do an actual live in-person workshop there so that would be fun um, so just trying right now, the airlines are so outrageous that it would, the amount we'd have to charge for a class to make that happen is just too high. So we're kind of hoping the airlines will come yes. down. With that. So it's ridiculous when you're paying like $3,500 for a flight, you know, and it's like, uh, oh my goodness. I was about to say, yeah, a flight to Europe is like 1200 bucks. Yeah, it was. It, it was a little pricey going, um, the Spain, the Spain ticket was just under 2000. So yeah, mm -hmm. it's crazy right now. The prices are, so it's like, well, let's do something online right now. And then hopefully it'll all kind of come down. So we Maybe can, Daniel it, but... can help us out with that. Yeah. Let's get these Daniel? guys working on our economy. One Octorians. <laughs> but again, what do they say? It's got to crash in order to rebuild it, right? So so that's good. But yeah, so if you guys want to be updated on my stuff, uh, go to my YouTube page or my website. I'm usually talking about the next thing I'm doing on either of those two places. So Absolutely. Yep. And uh, as always, I always have the links in the descriptions to her website and to her YouTube channel. Yay. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Keep up the good work. Keep yeah. it up. Love it. Love it. All right. So let's go get Daniel. Let's find out what he's got to tell us. Uh, all the all the pressing questions. <laughs> Jason and I never know what's it, what we're going to talk about. 
<laughs> I know today we're starting off late too. So yes. Yes. Late start. So we're not going to be very long this time, guys, but we do want to bring you something. So here we go. Let's see what he's got. All right. <laughs> Seriously, right now they're like, they're kind of giving me the cross arms. Like, so you're going to pick a different collective to talk to? Because you were saying that. Like, <laughs> what collective are you going to bring in today? Oh my goodness. Is Daniel talking about the wheel? Yeah, well, let's wheel spin. The wheel. spin. Daniel, come on, give others a turn. <laughs> That's hilarious. We always like to get in on the fun with you and bring in these joyful times. We want everybody to be in joyful times. There has been a lot of push and pull of energy, a lot of, of, your planetary systems going through its up up leveling up leveling and we want you all to pay attention because you've all already been through it you're on the other side of that you're clearing out some residue energy of it but you went through uh the birthing of it if you will the you you've gotten through this pressure this energy that has been putting you in a place to reflect and look at and deal with the things that are rising for you. And some of these things might be things you don't understand because they come from alternate realities or lifetimes. Some of it is old energy from childhood or, or old relationships. And they're resurfacing, they're coming up and, and things have been really, really being purged, if you will. And that is a phase that we are in right now, is a purging phase. And so you're going to get a reprieve and then purge, reprieve and then purge. And as you are with these energies that want to be purged, we encourage you, be with them, understand them, get in alignment with them. Ask, you know, ask for help from your collectives to get through these energies, because what happens is once you once you start healing these energies, then you no longer notice the purging energy. The purging energy will continue. It will never stop now. We we are in this cycle where everything needs to be purged that is no longer serving and, and uh, energetically a match to that desire of your new earth. And so as you keep working with these energies that show up for you, as you keep working with these mm, friction moments, if you will, these desires to leave a job or confront a loved one, you maybe not to confront them or confide in them and how you're feeling or bring out these energies of unsettled frequencies, right? And you're going to move those out because you're making room for the new energy to come in. And as some of you might even notice, sometimes you don't even have to uh, move into a conversation with these energies. You just recognize them. And then once you recognize them, then they're able to leave. And you'll notice that your mood will shift. 10 minutes ago, you were crying, crying in your, your tissues, right? And you were blowing your nose and you're making a hot mess out of yourself. And then 10 minutes later, you're over here and you're like, I feel like I should go to a movie or visit a friend or do something. And it's like, what's happening? My energy is all over the place. And it's because you are rapidly, some of you, rapidly moving this energy, rapidly purging this energy, because you're on the fast track to the new energy, the new earth, and creating a new reality for yourself. So with that, we're going to pause because we feel like maybe Jason has a question in here for us. <laughs> you want a question about what we just discussed, or you you talking about the questions that we were talking about? We will let you ask whatever you want to ask. We we think everyone knows they're in this cycle. And, uh, and if they didn't, then maybe they got a little insight. Okay. We're well, good. Well, well, let's play it out. So with the, the purging of the energies and so on, how is that coming along? Like, how is that looking for humanity? Purging out these energies. I'm assuming this is whether, I don't know if it's more good energy, negative energy, like what kind of purging of energy is this and how are we doing with this purging? We will say it is energy that is no longer serving. Okay. And so however, however that might feel, it's probably uncomfortable energy, energy that may feel heavy, dense, sad, uh, frustrated, feeling 
feeling energies of childhood, if you were not feeling like you were seen, heard, or valued, or or of that nature, dismissed in ways, you're going to have all of that. If you haven't fully purged it yet, it will be showing up for you. Uh, what we see with the collective is you're doing a magnificent job of this. It's showing up in all kinds of ways. And so as you are moving through that, as you move through one, then the next one's faster and the next one's faster. And remember, it's an ebb and flow. You're not going to feel it 24-7 straight through until it's all gone. You're going to feel it. You're going to feel it in this cycle of the moon and then that cycle of the moon or this cycle of the stars alignment and that cycle. Where is it landing in your house and that house? And so there's a lot of things that play into it, right? You've got your astrology. You've got your map of the world. You've got your your frequencies your design is different than Tracy's design. And so it, when the energies hit you, they're going to hit you differently and they have a different signature for you than they do for her. Everybody mm -hmm. gets greeted with this energy where they're at. And so what comes up for you could be different than what's happening across the way with another person. You're going to be, one person could be skipping down the sidewalk and elated and enjoy while you're crying your eyes out over uh, an incident that happened 20 years ago. Mm. And so just be in the energy that is showing up for you. And the faster you move through being with that energy, recognizing that energy, speak if you need to speak, let this be known if you feel it needs to be known or just being in the acknowledgement of what does it mean for you? What is, where did this come from? Do the clearing work. Do your work around it. Everyone has their way of clearing this energy. But we want to tell you, here's what we think might be beneficial. Let's say one day you wake up and you're just feeling this great sadness and you've been ignoring it all day and you've been just like, I don't even know why I'm sad. There's no reason to be sad. And you're just trying to put it off. And we encourage you, sit down. And just close your eyes and we want you to bring your your chin down to the chest because that's going to put you in the emotion and then you're going to ask yourself to feel sadness and just just be in the beautiful energy of sadness and and we want you to think like that this sadness is very heavy this sadness is all consuming how beautiful is this energy that is that is here to present itself let me acknowledge sadness and this thing that made me sad and honor the fact that that you are just in being sad. You are okay in being sad. It is all right. And what you're going to find is that energy will go and right out the crown chakra. And then it'll be gone forever. It doesn't come back. It only comes back if you keep pushing it back down and not looking at it. Don't look at it. And then it'll keep coming back for you. But when you sit with it and you have this conversation with it, you acknowledge it. And you embrace how beautiful it is to feel this emotion and to be present with it. Then it can leave. It no longer needs to be there knocking at your door saying, hello, you still haven't paid attention to me. And so we encourage everyone to go through these emotions because as you start releasing them, you're going to learn how to do this quicker and quicker. And then you're also going to learn how to honor your feelings in the moment so that they are not harboring all this energy throughout time while you're not while you're rejecting it and not looking at it and pushing it away and trying to ignore it and so you're going to be more present and more honest with your feelings from as you keep evolving in this and being honest with your feelings feeling safe in that you don't have to hide those feelings you're not going to sit there and go well if i tell this person how i really feel or what they're doing is hurting me they may leave forever you're going to lose your your um, attachment to that. They might leave forever, but were, if they left forever, then they were never the person you thought they were in the first place, right? Everyone knows that. And so you're going to lose your attachment to that. You're going to deal with the fear around that, that fear of abandonment, that fear of of loneliness, that fear of whatever that means to you if somebody leaves when you don't give them exactly what they want. And they're going to go off and learn what it feels like when when they take something personal that somebody else is saying about themselves and they take it in as a personal thing towards themselves. Everybody learns. Everybody gets to have a party in the learning of the emotions, right? And what you are doing is evolving into a more clean 
energy, if you will, of clean energy of self, a clean energy of the emotions. And as you evolve the emotions, you start to evolve the reality that plays out around you. You become more intuitive. You become more connected. You are able to communicate more energetically and telepathically because now your energy is safe and the energy of others around you is safe because that's what you're attracting to you. And that's what starts creating that fifth dimension or new earth scenario. When everyone starts to get into this energy of being safe in their own feelings, everything starts to expand because now the energy isn't so bottled up. Now it's starting to get open and communication on an energetic level will start to in, be enhanced and grow. That's where we'll leave that one. <laughs> we we don't mean to talk your ear off about it. <laughs> well, thank you very much for all that great information. So uh, if you want, we can move on to questions or we can move on to something else like the audience or something. But we did have a few questions that we wanted to ask you. Let us peek at the audience and then we'll jump into the questions. Perfect. We know that the audience likes this part as well as we do. And we always find somebody that's got something unique going and and it never fails. There's always that listener, right? And there's so always one. there's always that one listener that fits the mold. All right. We are seeing, we cannot make this up. We are seeing ice cream sandwiches ice cream sandwiches so somebody might be eating them maybe you just bought them at the store whatever this maybe you have this uh, addiction to the ice cream sandwich but it's making tracy hungry she's like i want one of those handed over <laughs> uh, so the ice cream sandwich now what is when you identify if you identify with that just that rings a bell for you or makes you giggle at all let's see what it, the message is with that it is good to treat yourself. Oh, here we go. It is good to treat yourself and to do things that are fun and joyful. Do it without guilt. Do it. Do the things that bring you joy and do it without guilt or feeling like, like you have to get someone else's permission to do something. Yes, you don't need to, you don't need to look outside of yourself to do the things that bring you joy. Hmm. Hmm. Give yourself a treat. Treat yourself once in a while. Go have an ice cream sandwich. So now everybody go get yourself an ice cream sandwich. If you're lactose intolerant, get yourself whatever you can that is a treat for you. Mm -hmm. And we like that. Okay. <laughs> Seems like everybody's going to be uh, having lots of treats for themselves. We're, we're going to get the messages that say, I gained five pounds since your last channel. Mm -hmm. Uh oh. They're going to be eating all the ice cream sandwiches, right? All right, let's see. What else do we see out here as we look at the audience? Somebody's about to get married. Ah. This is somebody that's uh, either a listener or this is somebody that that's listening that, that has a relative or a close friend that's about to get married. Um, this union, this, this marriage... One, it has them thinking either about their own situation. If this is somebody that is not the one getting married, you're thinking about your own situations. And we want to tell you, it is possible to create your reality. Something, If something in your relationship world isn't what you want it to be, and this is general for anyone that's resonating with this, if something is not what you want it to be, Go sit down and actually get clear on what it is you want. How do you want to feel? And it can only be about you. You cannot sit down and go, I want my partner to change. That doesn't work, does it? What do you want to change? I'm not happy. Well, go do something that makes you happy. It doesn't mean you have to leave somebody or or uh, it, it's not about the relationship always. It's sometimes it's just about you finding what makes you happy. So go find some things that make you happy. And see if it shifts the relationship. If it's the relationship itself that that is in trouble, then do what you do whatever you want to have happen there. What do you want? Get clear. Be honest with yourself. What do you want? Not what do you want for everybody else. What do you want for you? And when you can get clear on that, your world's going to change. 
and it's and you're just going to enjoy the ride right go along with whatever comes in for your world once you tell the universe what you clearly want you can't sit there and tell everybody what you don't want it never gets you anywhere it just gets you more of the same thing right so get very clear about what you want and something will change now if you are getting married if you are getting married hmm We feel like we're talking to more than one person here. So we want to get clear on this message. Somebody, marriage is not, you, you have this dreamy idea. We're going to get very real with you because we want you to be successful. And so we want to get very real with you. Uh, your courting time is was different than what marriage will be. In other words, you maybe you got spoiled a bit rotten or maybe things are always being catered or, or you know, the dating period, it always looks better. But there's going to be some, some realities coming in that maybe you weren't expecting. Maybe something's a little harder than you thought it was or that you thought it would be. And so you're making a big transition and you're you're making some big changes even if you've already lived together you're still making big changes and so we want you to take time to be patient don't get um don't get into a reactive place there's something you you are working through an old paradigm oh here we get into the juicy juice of it right uh, somebody is working through an old construct or an old belief system around marriage they grew up in a household that did not demonstrate a good marriage to them or something. Something needs to fall apart. It could be you. It could be the one you're marrying. But there's this construct around marriage. There was something that they witnessed growing up that did not demonstrate a healthy marriage. And there is going to be a breakdown of that construct. We feel like it'll be a magnificent, wonderful, growing experience for you. But we want you to hang in there. If it feels rough and hard and this isn't what I signed up for, don't worry. It gets better. Just let either you work through your stuff with it or the partner get them to work through their stuff with it. Because it is not about you. It is about, it is about breaking down old programs and getting out these old programs. Many of you, if, if you haven't known this before, the... You learned what marriage was between the time you were born and an early age of like six or seven years old. You saw your parents. Were the parents fighting? Were they not getting along? Were they separating? What was marriage like? Were they were they more like roommates or were they lovey dovey and gentle and kind to each other? And that and you built this belief system in the subconscious mind of what it looks like to get married. So when you move from the dating scene, that's all lovey dovey. And you put a ring on it, right? And then, then these old feelings, these these old fears of marriage, of these old constructs of what you thought marriage was when you were a child. Marriage means we fight. Marriage means that we separate. Marriage means we sit sit in two separate chairs or whatever it is, whatever you saw. Marriage means I don't come home at night until really late. Marriage means these things because that's what you saw. It's time to break those down. And whoever is resonating with this, you might be already married. You might be going through some things. Break down your old programs. Look at what your parents were like when they were married. How is that mirroring right now for you? And clear that energy. Let it be your own. Reinvent it. Marriage doesn't have to look like society wants it to look like. Marriage doesn't have to look like your parents want it to look like. Make it your own. Make that relationship yours and it can be any way you want it to be. Okay. We talked a lot about that. We'll let that one go. <laughs> and too much, too much of the da, 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 da. But we want everyone to be successful and quit getting caught up in these these old energies that are rattling around. It's time to let them go. Mm. Let's let's look for something really fun and juicy to talk about. Let's see who else is out here that wants to. Wants to bring in something joyful. There are a lot of you traveling. We encourage you to just make the, the most fun of that. Be in the moment. Be present. Go with the flow. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. 
Go with the flow of what's happening. Even if the plans don't work out, go with the flow. Something new is coming in. When something's not working out, it's making room for something else to come in. So let it come in because you're designing this life, right? You're in the driver's seat of this life and your higher self. And if it mo if it made room for something, it means you need to get ready for something different than what you thought. And there's a reason that space was made. So trust it. Okay. Let's have you ask a question, Jason. Okay. So the question that we have for today, it deals with East Coast. So lately, people have been feeling the uh, urge to either move to, to the East Coast or visit the East Coast or change jobs, get closer to the East Coast. And me and Tracy was talking about it, and we wanted to get your point of view of what do you see of the reason for individuals wanting to move to the East Coast or be involved more with the East Coast? Is something going on? Is there something that is needed? What do you see on your side? There is a lot of spaceship activity on the East Coast or on that side of the world in general. There's a lot of coming and going of ships and, and craft. And so there's a lot of energy uh, frequencies over there that are drawing people. That is one of the reasons there's a lot of draw to the East Coast because there are entry points from the ocean. What do you call them? Portals. Portals, and portals into the inner earth. And they go through the water and down deep into the, the ocean and, and then through the portals to get into the inner earth. Uh, that is, there are a few locations throughout the Atlantic Ocean for that. As you have already talked about many times, uh, there is the Crystalline City in that Florida area that, that is uh, even more activated now, which is why a big draw of the, the collective is going to Florida or visiting Florida or moving through there in some way, or even just thinking about it and, and putting energy towards that. So even if they don't actually ever move, the energy they put in that, that area is still a frequency that is sent there. A lot of people are being drawn to bring energy to help with with the big shift that is happening on the planet. It is the the vibrations are being brought in on the East Coast, and so there's a lot of support going in that direction for a lot of the what do we want to call it other than vibrational energies, the frequencies, the codes, the 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 codes are coming in uh, into the water over there. There's a lot of coding going into the land and into some activation. Uh, there was a time where they were working very strongly on the West Coast and bringing in a lot of frequencies to maybe navigate through corruption, if that's a word we want to use. We don't believe mm -hmm. good, bad, up, down, black, white, right? It's all, it is all just experience, but it was to neutralize some denser energies. We'll put it that way. And there was a lot of people that moved out of California when that happened. And so as they were working on the coastline of California, uh, people are very highly sensitive to energy, right? And so as there were, um, there was a time where, if you remember, uh, they were working on the underground tunnels and doing different work with all of that in California. And a lot of people were leaving California. The energy, mm -hmm. the frequencies were not an energetic match for for people because it was working with um, clearing out some denser energies that were going on in the lower realms of the floorboards of the earth. And so now we've got people being activated on the east coast there's an activation going on and that's drawing people over there and so it, it's an interesting thing when you look at it from a higher view if you get in your head and you just kind of bring yourself up higher and you see we look like little ants down here in this human realm right and so you're seeing all the little ants move and we watch this in nature all the time if there's an earthquake that's going to happen animals just naturally migrate and move right but we're all very sensitive to energy and so when the energy is shifting when it's pushing uh for for something to be cleared or something to be activated the human kind can feel it they just may not understand what it is they just know they have an urge to move or leave or some people came and some people went and so there was a trading out of posts if you will those who left needed to 
migrate to other areas and those who came in came to help hold and sustain some energy that was brought into California and into the West Coast in general, Oregon, California, and Washington, and so on, and all the way up, all the way down, all the way up. We're not we're not just playing in the states. We're just in Tracy's mind, and so she's she's in the states and she's keeping it condensed. But we are doing the entire West Coast. Then we move over and we we work on the entire East Coast. And you're seeing some of Europe is also being affected by this energy. Um, there is there is some energy going on. We want to say kind of in the northern hemisphere of Europe and and the coastline over there as well. But it is it is an interesting energy frequency, vibration, vortex, portals, wormholes, all these things. And you have a large um, a large gathering of of the spacecraft that hovers over that area watching over it as well. So now you've got an additional energy and frequency. So all of those identifying with these collectives, with these star seed collectives are are also feeling that pull because they can feel home, if you will, through these frequencies that are being emanated from the gathering of these ships and the collectives. Since you was talking and made me think about the Bermuda Triangle, does that have anything to do with any, any connections or anything like that? Hmm. You know, the B Bermuda Triangle, they're all in, they're all in the under earth, the underworld in that inner earth having a party. <laughs> and, um, there's probably quite a, a collective of people over the many years that fell into that gateway into the inner earth. Um, that is one one idea of, of what could be going on there. Hmm. Um, Never knew that. There's also, uh, there's energies over there. We're looking at it as, as we talk to you. Uh, there is... They're showing us gateways, gateways. So it's like Stargate, like a Stargate, a portal into other worlds, other dimensions. Uh, there's This is a portal into, it's more than just the inner earth. It can, it, it's like a dial that can be changed. It can be, the frequencies can be changed and it can bring you to different, different worlds, different, what do we want to say, universes, all types of things this uh, Bermuda Triangle, and it's quite large space. It's it's quite a large, it's not like it's, you could say it's the circumference of a three mile, it's, it's large, it's a very large opening for for spacecraft of or, or things of a large size to move through it. So this Bermuda Triangle is a, is a very big area, if you will. But yes, we we'll just say that maybe maybe there's some people on airplanes and and ships and things that disappear that they're they found their way to they probably think they died and went to heaven right they're like oh mm -hmm. our plane must have crashed where are we and they're in a whole new world uh, a whole new way of being but uh, they just went through the portal. That's interesting. I've heard of stories where they went into the future, you know, from like, whether it's Dolores Cannon's book or certain individual sessions that, you know, portals to the future and other worlds as well. So that's interesting. Mm, yes, we didn't even consider the future because there's some some reality where we always see it kind of like you see timeline is linear and we see it almost like a stack of pancakes right every pancake is another another layer of time and so we always see it as above or below and so that is interesting when you do that when you talk about the future we're like oh yeah they could be up here and when we know you're going oh they could be over here and and yours is linear where ours is is above or below so we just want to share that because tracy found it interesting that we went up in in our energy to look at, oh future yes that could be interesting but <laughs> why not anything can happen right absolutely so with that being said why also another thing that i know we're talking about the east coast so of course florida's in there but it looks like 
a good amount of people moving to Florida or associated with Florida in some form or fashion. Even one of Tracy's friends moved to Florida. I have a friend that moved to Florida, I have a friend that's interested in Florida if he ever gets that job over there. So what's the connection with Florida besides the East Coast part? Is it something special as well with that? We're looking to, we are asking the, uh, the other collectives, if there is more to tell about that, that we haven't already expressed. If there is information about Florida that, that is, that is not on our radar. We talked about the Crystal City, the waters, the shifting of the waters. Mm -hmm. mm. And on top of that, if you, if you could, the next part of it would be, does it have anything to do with Atlantis or anything? And what's your <laughs> it's funny, we that? must have been picking up on your thoughts because we're like, okay, we talked about that. We didn't talk about Atlantis. Uh, and many, many souls from Atlantis are reincarnated right now. And there is the great activation of those energies. Those souls are being awakened quite rapidly. And if they haven't already been awake, they are being awakened and in the remembering of their Atlantean lifetimes. And uh, so that is also a possibility that that is a magnetic draw for them to be in familiar climates and an area of the planet. There is a lot of Atlantis energy in Florida. And so for some of you that don't identify with Atlantis being in that particular geographical area, it is more about the frequency vibration that is being created there that is mirroring because of the crystal city that is bringing in that frequency and vibration of Atlantis that is also drawing people to this, these coordinates, these, this location. So yes, we are glad that you brought that in because as you were thinking it, so were we. We didn't bring that piece in. Interesting indeed. Because I think even with the Bermuda Triangle, there's a connection with Atlantis as well. Mm. We also see a ley line that is running through like a like an artery right in the body. There is a pulse uh, ley line that runs through. It feels like it goes right down that leg of Florida, right? And right down the center of it. And it feels like it is also creating a frequency and uh, drawing in drawing in energy from that particular uh, point of origin of of Florida of the ley lines. Uh, we want to. Tracy's in here saying, "What is the ley line connected to?" Because she knows that, like the pyramids and all the things, are all connected through these ley lines. And so we want to look. It is interesting because the we're looking at this this particular string of energy moving through the planet. There's a crystal grid that runs underneath the earth. There's a crystal grid, so it goes in multiple directions. It's almost like it, it sprouts out, but it's in a sacred, it's almost like it forms a sacred geometry. Oh, this is interesting. These are good questions because now we get to see it too. It is forming like a crystal grid underneath the land itself and into the water. And there is some sacred geometry being formed through this connection of that ley line into the other crystals that are in the earth. So it's forming, it's forming like one would see a snowflake and it forms all these beautiful patterns. It is forming a beautiful pattern of frequency that goes much bigger than, than Florida itself. It goes, overlaps into the water, it overlaps into the surrounding uh, areas as well, but that is the center point of this this uh, crystal grid that is being created beneath the surface. Lots of reasons to go to Florida. Are you two ready to get on a plane and, and move there yourselves after we talk about it? It's, it's definitely going to be a very activating um, energy for those people who are, are residents of Florida. Some people are probably saying, oh, yeah, the, I've been out there. I, I see these people. But we're <laughs> sometimes people people will reflect differently when they are. It, it will come. 
it doesn't always happen on our timeline, right? But it is happening. And there is a large group of very enlightened beings heading in that direction or moving there or already have moved there. And so you're all there for purpose. You're all holding holding energies and frequencies for this grid and for the activation of a lot of things. And it is like the pressure point, if you will, for, for this energy to wrap itself around the world. It starts here and starts to spread out and move. So it is, it is a good place for a lot of people to be holding energy. Is this energy needed to help out the shift or help calm the energy, anything like that? It's doing all of that, yes. It's it's a great way to put it. There are um, there are many changes. We all want to think that these changes are very like these loving little rays of light are coming into our earth, and it's helping us to wake up, and it's helping us to have uh, the, all these beautiful thoughts and be connected to all these beautiful beings. But in reality, what happens is these energies, these frequencies, come in and they stir it up. They have to break apart the old constructs in order to get you into that bliss and into your joy. And can you believe that, right? It's like, it's almost like, it's almost like they have to force you to get into your joy by taking away all the things that, that you hate, right? Oh, I hate my job. I hate my job. Oh, I got fired today. I can't believe I got fired. Well, the universe mm -hmm. is pushing you out of that thing you hate so that you can be in your joy. And that's what these energies do. They come in and they they sniff out where you're not happy and they start making ruckus in that area so that you, where you will not move for yourself, the universe will create it and it'll get you moving. And it will, if you're not making the changes on your own, if you feel that you should be making a change and you just keep digging in your heels, the universe is going to come in and it's going to make that change for you. And let's tell you what, if you're smart, you'll make the change on your own because it doesn't always feel so good when you're uprooted without any warning. And it just kind of comes in and gobsmacks you and says, here you go. You're changing. You don't want to make the change. We'll make it for you and pushes you into a new direction. But it is always a better direction. If you can go with the flow of things, if you can go with following the heart and moving into the things that give you joy, the things that give you the energy um, the things that light you up and get you excited about life. That is where you need to be. And the rest will follow, right? And how many times has everybody heard that? The rest will follow. Do the thing that makes you happy and, and everything else will fall into place. But as more and more people are doing that, as more and more people are listening, even if you feel like you can't do it all at once, I need to pay my bills, I can't just drop that and jump over here. Try to at least do something every day that that is joyful so that you have something to look forward to. And we've said that a hundred times, right? Put something on the calendar to look forward to. Put something on the calendar to look forward to. It <laughs> will help you. It will help you pull out of these everyday low frequencies, work and groceries and kids and, and cooking and cleaning and then work and groceries and kids and cooking and cleaning again. Whatever it is your patterns are or your cycles are, Put something fun on the calendar so that you have something to look forward to, whatever your life story is. If you are not going, oh, you know what I get to do in a couple of days, and or you know what I get to do next month, and you have something fun to talk about, something to share, something to look forward to. It's very important to keep these energies going, because if you don't create the energy, then the universe comes in, law of attraction, it's going to come in. We're working towards an earth. You you sit there and say, I want my 5D earth, please. Can I have 5D earth? And, mm -hmm. and you've got to make the changes. And those Thinking changes are always comfortable. Mm -hmm. And and the frequencies that come in, these, these, what do you want to call them? The codes, the vibrations that are being created, that are being sent into this planet to bring it out of, out of the old into the new. They, they're not, created to be soft and gentle and coddling they're created to shake your world up so that you will move out of an old you have to grow in this right you have to the whole reason you're here is because you want to evolve and if something is just handed to you then you didn't 
possibly really evolve from that. And so you're that diamond and the pressure, right? You're that coal that's being pushed into the diamond. You've got this. You know what you're doing because your higher self created it for you. So trust that you are on the right path. Trust the nudges you're getting. Follow it as best you can. It's leading you to great things. And you set it up. So why would you set yourself up in a higher dimension to fail in this one? And you wouldn't. You would set yourself up to keep succeeding if you follow it. So follow it. All right. Did we answer your question? <laughs> oh, absolutely. Perfectly. That was a good good amount of information. So we're not to an hour yet, but I know we're started we started kind of late on this one. We have time for one more question or let's do, let's do one. Oh, or let's hear you out. Or if there was anything else you would like to share that you wanted to discuss for tonight. Let's go ahead and do one more question and, and see where we're at with that. Okay. So the other thing that we were talking about and we wanted to get your viewpoint on was what are your thoughts with all the weird weather that is going on, whether it's the snow up north, the, uh, the rain down here in the south, uh, the tornadoes, the wild winds. What are you saying? What, what information can you give us on that? <laughs> Here's one thing to think about. All things are consciousness. The wind, the snow, the water, the tornado, the fire, the land, the trees, everything. It's all consciousness. And something is trying to get your attention, right? They're trying to say everything can change. And don't get in your routines. And Tracy's over here going, where's my spring flowers, right? Where are the flowers at? <laughs> and, um, we just say that be flexible, be in that flow of things. Uh, yes, it could be contributed to uh, the flexing polar shifts and all of the things. And yes, there's a lot of planetary changes going on. And if this is not evidence of that, we don't know what is, but your world is talking to you. Uh, Dolores Cannon and Julia Cannon, they will talk about how your body talks to you. Your body will give you an ache or a pain when it's time to change something or you're, you're hanging on to something you shouldn't. Uh, your body will talk to you and your world talks to you too. So when the weather is getting a little wonky or when it is uh, in this disarray from what you are used to, it's saying, I'm doing this to demonstrate to you that it is changing. Things are changing. Even the weather mm. patterns are changing. And so that which you were used to your entire life, you got four seasons. Well, now we're turning them into three and a half or whatever it might be. Something is changing and the world is saying it out loud. It's showing you and the earth is talking to you. And how exciting is that when you can learn to sit and listen to it and say, oh, what do you want me to know? What do you want me to know about you today? Is there anything I can do for you? And Mother's Day is coming up, right? And let's treat Earth Mother on Mother's Day and just sit with her and say, what would you like from us today on the planet? And she'll say, go pick up all those pop cans you see over there. Go clean up this earth a little bit. Or maybe she'll say, just send me lots of love. Um, or just enjoy me today. Go play in the ocean for those who can do that. Go celebrate your your life and hug a tree and do the things, right? But listen to your planet. It is talking to you, but you are safe. You are taken care of. Talk back to her and nicely. Don't be like Tracy going, you're raining again. <laughs> <laughs> wet outside. Be nice to her. Let her know that you love her and thank you for taking care of me and bringing this glorious rain that's growing the crops, that's growing the food that I eat. Thank you for those crops. Be grateful. Start holding gratitude. We're talking about this and we just want to tell you the most brightest white light is happening as we talk about it. And that's because as a collective that is listening to this, and even though you are listening to a recorded version, you are all here with us present right now in this moment. We see all of you. And this beautiful offering of light is coming in 
And we see lots of people holding their hands up and moving this energy and gratitude towards everything that's been provided. Thank you to the weather. Thank you to the earth mother. Thank you to the water, the wind, the air. Thank you to all of it. And hold that gratitude. That's what it's trying to tell you. It is changing. It's giving you demonstration. You guys keep asking, are we moving into 5D? Are we moving into new earth? When is this going to happen? So she says, okay, well, let's just show them that things are changing. And here it is in this form. So pay attention. Mm -hmm. What else is going to be shown to you? Yeah. And of course, in scientific terms, Yes, you can look at all the global shifting and the polar shifts and the things and the that, this and the that, and all of that is happening too. But in the more um, etherical terms of it, in the more emotional version of it, this is what is happening. Perfect, perfect. Very interesting stuff indeed. Thank you for all that information. Mm -hmm. Very exciting times. And I guess that's true. That's, I mean, it's kind of like the weather has to do its purging as well, right? The, the changes of the energies. So Absolutely. that was the last question I had. And if there's not anything else, we'll have to wrap it up and save we it are. for next time. <laughs> we will We will let you wrap it up and save it for next, next time. We remind everybody, ask for what you want. Ask for what you what you feel you need ask for what you want remember you are supported you live in a world that does support you start affirming it i live in a world that supports me i live in a universe that wants me to thrive i am living my best life i am finding joy in the things i do it's time to start speaking for those things you want for those things you desire no more no more of the wanting, no more of the pining for it, no more of the everyone else but not me, no more of that. You are not a victim. Call in your life the way you want it. Ask for that. Put your request in. Tracy's son started calling it the my request to the universe, and she loves that. And so she wants mm -hmm. you all to put your request in to the universe, please. Please submit your request now and do that. Be very clear. What do you want? You don't get to do that for everybody else, just for you. What do you want for you? And when you get clear on that, there you go. And with that, we will bring Tracy back to you. And we thank you so much, Jason, for letting us be here again with you and for letting us enjoy this ride of energy with everybody. And let's all celebrate this earth that is working so hard to create new things for everybody, a new way of being, as you all are enjoying these shifts, yes, we say it with a little jokingly, enjoying these shifts. But yes, be in the joy of it as much as you can. And with great love and gratitude, we'll see you next time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was a lot of, that was really cool at the end when they were doing, seeing all that light. Um, it uh, did seem pretty cool. Yeah. And, and there was all these hands going up and there was just all this, these little beams of light that just kept kind of shooting and spreading out. So that was kind of neat. I like that. Nice. It was um, a good way to end. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't expecting that. So that, that was pretty neat. What was some of the other things you were seeing? I know we talked about Florida, the East Coast portals. Oh, and all that, that stuff. grid. That grid was so cool. It almost reminded me of, um, you know, like when they show you that aerial view of what people believe Atlantis looked like. And it was like it went out into this little grid like looking. Um, I don't even know how to explain that. because Oh, like a circle yeah, with the grid? Yeah, like the circle and then little. But this thing was it was it was underground. And this ley line was connecting all of these grids. And when it did, it created this sacred geometry um, crystal grid that looked like one of those patterns, you mm. know? So, um, yeah, maybe like something a crop circle would do or something, right? And and anyways, it was that was really neat to see that. I was glad that you kept asking more questions about that because um, what happens is it just goes deeper. And, you know, they go look for it 
for those answers. So we get more answers, but um, that was really neat to see that and how it's connected. So what I was seeing is you got Florida, then you got this crystal grid down here and the crystal city up here. And like mm -hmm. all this energy is kind of, they're kind of sandwiched between this energy. Like an ice cream sandwich. Like an ice cream sandwich. Boom. <laughs> You we know what? I don't have out. any of those in the refrigerator, and that's kind of disappointing now. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check Karen's stash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Karen, I want one. And there's Binksy. Oh, short appearance. What are yep. they called? The cameo? <laughs> yep. Uh, he yeah. might come back. He's going to make oh. his appearance back there. All yeah. right. Anyway, yeah, so that was that was a lot of a lot of energy with that. Um, what was some of the other stuff you asked me? Uh, Bermuda Triangle. When you asked about that, and they were saying it's a portal into the inner earth, I literally saw like one of those stargates, like the movie Stargate, right? Oh, and it okay. opens up and like the water's running down over into it and the That's ship stargate. goes in or the thing <laughs> goes, yeah, just opens up and then it would close back up. But it was more like it was, it's not like it was a big metal or tangible thing. It was kind of more like it was this energetic um, portal that opens up. So, and it would take, you know, takes you wherever it's set to take you. So it would make sense that the future, the inner earth, other planetary places. Yeah, it was one of the theories. I forgot what book I read that in. I think it was, might have been Dolores Cannon's book, but I thought that was interesting that they went into the future. And when they did that, the vibration was not a match. And they, not disintegrated, but like their molecules separated. Oh, so do you think at some point we will start finding the debris to some of that stuff? I like we're so. catching up to the future and then they'll be like oh we found a part of one of the ships that was missing or one of the things that went missing maybe in a triangle and now all of a sudden we're catching up to the timeline that they were on the question is what timeline was it yeah or is it an alternate <laughs> reality where we'll never catch up to it right that is true too so from what i understood when we were talking about it so even if they did go into the future, we still wouldn't see the leftovers or the remains, even of the aircraft, because that wasn't a vibration match either for that time frame. So it would be too much mm -hmm. energy all at once, and it just separates. So center. what does that tell you guys? Do not go into the future through the Bermuda Triangle. You only operate. Make, make a note of that. <laughs> <laughs> Tracy told me not to go. Clear, clear. <laughs> go around the Bermuda Triangle. Oh my gosh, that's funny. But tell the captain of the cruise ship, you know, Tracy said <laughs> you can't yeah. go this way, buddy. <laughs> yeah, we need to go around that. Yeah. Don't want a bad day. So that's pretty interesting with Florida and the East Coast and stuff and uh, connection with Atlantis. So that was pretty neat. Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because one of the things I was seeing oh. is a lot of ships, uh, like oh, spacecraft. Yeah. There was a lot of spacecraft over top of that area, mostly over the waters, not over the land, but over mm -hmm. the waters. And they're all just there. Did it look like North thing. Carolina? Because I heard North and South Carolinas Carolina. were there. Yep. There was a lot of sightings. That makes sense. Yeah. Because it was, I mean, it's all along the whole East Coast. Uh, but um, when we were talking about Florida uh, and other parts, I was hearing in my head the Carolinas. And um, so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. It makes sense that they're seeing ships. So hmm. if everyone starts paying attention, I bet there's a lot more ships out there to be seen. But they do cloak themselves as well. So yeah, we her allies were we're actually looking at one. We think we're looking at the sky and it's actually a cloaked ship. Are there changed the vibration of the ship to a different frequency? Or they're, or yeah, or they're so high up that, you know, they're not in our atmosphere and we wouldn't see them anyway. Yeah. Uh, you know, the bigger ones are doing that, but there are some littler ones that come and go and they're going in and out of the ocean. So of course they're in our atmosphere. So there must be a portal over by the Carolinas if they're seeing them over there. I think Getting so. Them getting them in and out. It's been on I, what had, episode? I had a client 
that didn't mm-hmm. know about the inner earth. And in her regression, that was QHHC and her regression, she was like, oh, I'm going into the earth. Well, that's weird. There's a whole city down here. And she's talking about it. And I'm like, the way she's talking about that makes it sound like she doesn't, she didn't know that was a thing. So I was really curious and waiting for her to get to the end of her session so I could ask her. And she, I said, so did you know that there's an inner earth? And she's like, what do you mean? I said, like, you went to this city inside the earth. And she's like, yeah. And I said, did you know that's real? And she's like, what? No, it isn't. And she's oh, like, no way. I said, you go home and look that up. <laughs> Oh my so, goodness, she's going to be exploring so, all kinds of rabbit holes now. <laughs> oh, I know. It's all over. Her life is over. It'll be all on the internet now, looking all this stuff up. But that was really cool, too, when somebody that isn't aware of these things, yes. that's on their radar, and yes. here it comes in their sessions. So, mm-hmm. And I cool. get, and I see questions on other people's channels, and I even receive those type of questions like, oh, you know, what if it's a client that doesn't believe in any of that stuff, and yet that stuff is still coming up as true, which has happened, and you just brought up a perfect example of it. Even I had clients that were like, I have this need, I have this urge, and the next thing you know, they're spitting out all this stuff, and it's like, where did it all come from? What is all this? Yeah, (laughs) like, I didn't even know I knew that. No, (laughs) I, I don't know. These I'll tell you what, these sessions that we get to do with QHHT or like the Ascension sessions, all of it, it's just, it's an incredible thing. Like I had, I had a client come in, didn't really believe in past lives, which I'm like, okay, so why are you here for this session? But didn't really believe in it, had three past lives in their session, three of them. We get done, go back, sit down to review the session. And I said, so how do you feel about past lives now? Yeah, I, I don't know. I still don't really think they're real. <laughs> like, you cried. You cried in one of them. Oh, <laughs> uh, how broken do you need how it do today? You th- how do you think that this is it? <laughs> you know, it's like, um, yeah, that, that one's hard for me to wrap my mind around when people think that this is it. This is their one and only. And, know. Um, you know, when wrap my mind here, around that. that's it. And it's like, how? How is that it? <laughs> you know, there's so much more. And that was a debate with uh, a certain individual, and that was one of the debates that we went round and round about. You know, you get one life, and then after that, you with the kingdom of God and yeah. the love of Jesus. Oh, but everyone's created equal, but you get one life. Yeah, I was like, how is that? How's that real? I was like. But if you only get one, where did you come from before that? So that yeah. was a whole nother conversation. <laughs> so many but questions. A lot mm. of the stuff that, you know, that she was talking about, you can even relate it to the metaphysical world. It's just maybe two things that's just different or separate. Yeah. You know, different viewpoints or separate viewpoints. And it's only like a couple of things, you know. So she even shared a video with me and I'm like, this guy seemed like he had a metaphysical experience, just like a lot of other individuals did as well. You know, you just have to replace God with source and you're just 90% there, you know, and then other than that, just the different viewpoints, you know, the one life thing and a couple other things. And that was it. I was like, for the most part, we're on the same page. You know? Yeah. So. Well, and that's that's true. I notice that a lot too, that we're all we're all kind of saying the same thing. We just have a different way of saying it. So why are we fighting? You know, and it's like <laughs> <laughs> I'll consider fighting, just you know, conversation. <laughs> conversation. Well, you know, religion is as a general rule, you stay away from religion and politics, right? When you go into <laughs> when you go to family events or whatever. Mm-hmm. But um yeah, you know, why are these religious constructs also against each other? You know, it's like mine's right, yours wrong. We're all being saved. You're sorry about your luck. You're not part of our community. Bye bye. Have mm. fun in the flames. And it's like, but we're all saying the same thing be a good person, do your best, Correct. you know, treat others with kindness. 
Exactly. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> exactly. Oh yeah, for sure. Um, the same exact thing. It's just, you know, other than the other thing that was separate is that, you know, the other argument was heaven and hell. Of course, I knew that was going to be a topic and, you know, I said, if anything, you know, if you hear all the harshness, the hard reality, the hard facts of life, yeah, reality, you considered he earth to be hell, just a hard experience for certain individuals, a very difficult time and so on, versus, you know, being in heaven. Yeah. And she's like, no. There is a heaven and there's a hell. <laughs> and if you don't take oh. God into your heart, then you're going to experience hell. So, and I was like, well, wait a minute. I, th I thought if you did something bad, you go to hell. And I was like, no. So is it, is it one of the commandments, thou shall not judge or something? I don't know. Maybe it, when it comes to the Bible, they have a right to talk about it and teach it. Oh, I guess. <laughs> yeah. So... And I said, if anything, you ever heard of like you, your worst critic, you know, I said, you know, from what I'm learning and from what I'm reading is that when you pass on, you judge yourself, you know, how harsh, you know, if I, and I said, if I did you wrong, I get to experience all that hardness and all that harshness and, and that, that uh, sadness, you know, the pain, I feel that, you know, under review. Yeah. And she's like, she's like, no, no. I was like, all right, well, you know, it's just, a, just well, you know, and that kind of talking. falls into the reincarnation too. Whatever hard harshness that you give to other people or whatever, whatever wronging you do to other people, now you got to be reincarnated and experience that happening. Right. Too. You know, and so that's a motivator to me. Like, I don't want, so the whole heaven and hell thing, it's like, that doesn't feel right. But if you tell me whatever you do to another person, you're going to come back in another life. And that, you know, that's going to come back to you. Mm -hmm. Well, then you're just going to be like super nice to everybody. Cause you're going to want a super nice, easy lifetime. Right. So, cause that goes both ways. You're nice to somebody. You're going to come back and have a good life. So, yep. I don't yeah. know. so now I was like, well, what's considered a bad person? If someone steals, like, is that it? You're a bad person. But she's like, well, if you did something good, then that changes things. It's like, oh, <laughs> so now it changes. So it's like, okay. So I'm just playing it out. Yeah. And um, so then I said, so what if the person doesn't change? You know, like, what if the person keeps doing bad things? Does he still go to hell? He doesn't have a chance to make things right. You know, maybe that's the reason for reincar reincarnating into earth you know coming back to earth for a second chance to do things right and she goes no like if you don't um take the um the lord into your heart and you know change your ways from that accept him then you you won't be into heaven you won't get to heaven i was like oh okay so you could do bad do wrong but as long as you're willing to take god into your heart you, you get know. get off free pass <laughs> all right you know he's like well now i got now i know what to do you know yeah. so you know it was a conversation very very interesting and the other thing was um you know god and source you know this it's connected uh it's related to each other so i said you know and then we brought up male or female. And I said, that's another conversation, but we won't talk about that right now because that's a whole nother conversation. You're and just having that, way too much fun in this conversation. I know. So I was like, okay. I said, let's let's get to the to the main part of the conversation. I was like, you know, I said it's kind of it was hard for me to wrap my mind around it because I always thought that we were separate. You know, God's doing his thing and we're doing our thing. And yeah. You know, we're, worship god and so on so it was hard to wrap my mind around it when you know you, when you read in the books and so on and they're like uh well if you came from god and you 
a part of God, then you are God. And I'm like, no, that's separate. Like, there's no connection. It's just, you know, God's off doing his thing, you know, and, and then, you, you know, you learn later on that, well, you're part of his life and so on. So in a way, yeah, you're living out your experience because he wants to experience certain things in yeah. life. He wants to experience everything. And that's why we want to do so much things in life. So, so that's the part I brought up with her. And it was, that's where a little bit of a difference came from. And the difference is from her point of view is that God already experienced everything. There's no, there's no need for God to experience anything. And I was like, hmm, but you just said we're part of God, like as well. You know? So what's the point of so of being in these lifetimes if we're part of God? Right. So it's like if we're here to experience certain things and we're still part of God. And then, I, you know, I'm like, then whatever we're trying to do or whatever we're doing for the collective, the same thing that God wants, you, you know, God's will. And they're like, no, this is something that we want to do. I was like, okay. So that was the little part that was like a little different. Mm -hmm. So, and then I was like, the next day I asked, I'm like, so what about aliens? What do you thought about <laughs> that one? <laughs> so she, she laughed. Let's have this like, one over coffee. What do you think of aliens? I was like, so what? It's like, do they have the same God? Oh, I, I, I said, you don't have to answer. She started laughing. So she's like, get out of here. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. It's all the same. All the same. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's my reality anyway. And everyone else can have their own reality with it. Right. Absolutely. That's the whole message with Daniel is everyone's right because it's creating the reality that they're experiencing. So they're correct. True. So true, true, true. Well, it is 1022 my time. I know we started late, it's but we made time. it work. We started Thanks late. For, we got on the call for, late. He had to deal with me being like, can you give me a minute? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Um, yes. But the stars Probably. aligned and made the space. So here it is. Yeah. All right, you guys. Cool. Well, let's well, wrap it up. For, thank you for having me on again, Jason. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Yes. Till next time. Take Till care. next time. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.